Hello FlossTube, my name is Sarah, I'm from Memphis, and this is my channel about cross-stitch. Today is Wednesday, January the 19th, and this is FlossTube number 12 for me. My first regular floss tube of the new year. So hello, how's everybody been doing? Nice to see you. If you're new, welcome, and if you're not new, welcome back. Um, yeah, I really needed to do this floss tube today. I've had kind of a hot mess of a morning, y'all. Um, I'm going to the Steel City Stitcher Cross Stitch Retreat in next month, which is just a few weeks away with Zan, and we are flying out of Memphis. And I'm not entirely sure whether I have to have the real ID with a star on my driver's license or not, or if I'm under some sort of, um, you know, they extended the deadline because of COVID or whatever. But regardless, I had an appointment this morning to go get my real ID made. So I get up and I'm doing the, my normal morning things and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna gather my documents, et cetera, et cetera. I am an organized individual. I went to the safe, I got my folder out that contains my documents and my birth certificate is not in there. It's nowhere that I've been able to find yet. Um, it's not mistakenly filed in someone else's folder. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know where it is. I'm currently going through stacks of things that it should have no business being in. But that is like, I could either bring my birth certificate, my number one thing I have to have, either my birth certificate or an unexpired passport. And guess whose passport expired during COVID? This girl's. So, um, yeah, it's kind of a problem. I was really frustrated. And um, basically in tears, I mean, I can find my sibling's birth certificate in their baby book because I'm just the person that has all those things and I can't find my own. Um, I will say that my birth certificate, my high school diploma and my um, college diploma are, none of those are in my file. And it leads me to think, did I need that to, um, for a job or something that I applied for? Uh, I haven't applied for a job in a long time, um, but I also haven't needed my birth certificate in a long time. So I'm on the hunt. And like I said, the frustration level was going through the roof and I just needed to kind of step away from that. So I made myself a latte and thought I would film a floss tube. Um, I really wanted to film one the end of last week, but I just haven't really been feeling very good. And I even um, got tested for COVID because I was having some mild symptoms and um, my COVID test was negative. So I've just been feeling a little under the weather, not myself, but I am feeling better. And like I said, I really need to work on this and just to step away from the birth certificate situation because it is a situation right now. I was not born in the state that I currently live in. So I have a feeling that if I cannot find my birth certificate, it's not going to be easy to get my hands on. I don't know. I may be borrowing trouble. I'm going to keep looking. But like I said, I needed a break. So here I am. Um, what's been going on other than all of that drama? Uh, it's January. And I was watching, who was I watching? I was watching someone's floss tube yesterday. And they were like, you know, the 365 days of January, which I thought was totally totally appropriate. It might have been a uh, kindred stitcher. It was like January feels like this super, super long month and it's rainy and dreary here today, which usually doesn't bother me too much, but it just seems very January-ish. Um, so let's see what we're going to go over. This floss tube number 12, the first floss tube of uh, 2022 for me. I still owe you a 2021 finish parade. Maybe I'll film that next. It just depends on how long I want to avoid the birth certificate hunt, right? Right. Okay, so I have a really, really, really big finish to share with y'all that I am beyond excited about. I've had a great last week, week and a half maybe even, of working on some whips. I've really, really enjoyed my stitching the last couple of weeks. Um, I had a little fun. We had a fun stitchy social outing. I've got plans to talk about. So let's just get to it, right? Oh, disclaimer. If you hear a loud, huge, scary, humongous bark that I cannot, for whatever reason, edit out, I'm going to apologize right now on the front end. Winnie's best friend, Tilly, my grand dog, is here. And Tilly uh, is very particular about who is allowed to walk up and down our street 
drive up and down our street, step on the yard, uh, you name it. So she's uh, the boss dog and she lets everybody know that she is here and she does not approve. <laughs> so like I said, apologies in advance if that happens. Um, the first thing I want to talk about today is my magnificent finish. This finish is probably my favorite finish so far. Yeah, I haven't been stitching a terribly long time. I started summer of 2020. So, um, but this finish uh, is my was my birthday start in 2020 and my birthday's in December. And I stitched on it here and there sporadically. And then I really buckled down on it during the marathon for missing and murdered indigenous women, girls and two spirits um, in September and October. And then I buckled down on it some more kind of just the rest of the year to get it finished by 2021. I did not finish it in 2021. I finished it like January 3rd because I chose to do the um, 12 new starts on New Year's Eve. And so I lost that whole stitching day on it. But I am going to show you the Nutcracker. And the Nutcracker is quite large. I measured. So Nutcracker is 295 by 295. So that's 18 inches square. All right. So I'm going to get her and show her off. So just give me just a second here. I'm coming, bring her back. So there's my Nutcracker. This is the Nutcracker by RATM. I love this. It is amazing. I cannot wait to get it framed and on the wall. Um, this is stitched on a 32 count Tyco by Picture This Plus. Um, it's a very light fabric, but it does have a multitude of colors just kind of blended throughout. Um, this is a sampler that's considered a Quaker, if you're not familiar with that at all. All the little individual motifs. I adore it. Um, this A, my last name begins with an A, so that was completely appropriate. I don't know if I have a favorite motif. I really like this blue here. Um, I really like the look of the Christmas tree, but it was not the most fun motif to stitch. Um, do you see these, how they're like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. They were really odd to stitch. Like they look really good, but a lot of these Quakers, you can just get into a rhythm and it just makes sense with your brain. These just threw me off every time. I love the presents. I really did not enjoy stitching the pants. However, I did like stitching this little podium or those his feet or whatever, not his feet, these are his feet, but this little podium he's standing on or, or whatever that may be. But I did enjoy stitching this. I love these little round flowers here. This is stitched in DMC. And um, I'm so excited because I was watching the Steel City Stitchers the other day. And I look here, I did leave the 2021 in here because I really could have finished this in 2021. And I did all the work in 2021. So that bad boy was staying. Um, I am excited. I like the butterfly too. Kind of unexpected. The presents were fun to stitch was watching the Steel City Stitchers the other day and one of the girls was talking about the fact that RITM was gonna be at the retreat and I am so excited because I'm gonna take the front cover of the pattern and ask her to sign it for me and then when I frame it, I'm gonna insert it in the back of the frame so I have it. But I'm also super excited just to meet her because <laughs> she's like my fave. Be like Kathy Barrick being there. All right, um, the other thing is this rat king or mouse king i'm going to ask her about because when i was stitching this i kept stitching and thinking like is there an error because do you see like this situation coming down here and then how it kind of goes over this motif and it's like this gobbledygookly i'm not really sure about this um and so i was trying to do some research and then i found this disgusting there's this thing where like it's called a rat king and it's where like a bunch of tails of rats all get jumbled up and stuck together and i'm like is that what that's about i don't know what this is that i stitched in here i want to know though <laughs> so i'm excited about that um 
I did, I, I don't really, I kind of have a hard time uh, usually putting my initials on a chart. I don't like the way they look most of the time, but I decided to do my initials like this, this time in the boots, and I like that, I, I like that. I was going to stitch it in with like maybe a different color brown, but actually, oh my gosh, if I just got pen on this, I'm gonna die. Sorry, there's a pen right there. I mean, I'm not gonna literally die, but that was scary because pen doesn't come out of crap. Oh my gosh, I think I'm safe. <sighs> okay, sorry. Mild, mild freak out moment there. Um, I was going to um, kind of fill that in, but then the other parts of the boots aren't filled in, so I'm just going to leave it. I don't know. What do you think? I, I, like I said, I think this is my favorite finish so far um, that I've done. I just, I adore it. I have the perfect place for it to hang it during Christmas. And when it's not during Christmas, it's gonna hang in my stitchy room. So I'm gonna get this framed. Yay. I know, I'm so excited. I can't quit showing it off, but it's just so beautiful. The colors are beautiful. The designs are just, they're just gorgeous. Like, ah, oh. and they were really, really, it was a really enjoyable stitch. Um, like I said, I only had a few complaints and they were just personal preferences. They weren't anything about the design. They were just, I was tired of stitching those red pants or whatever it may be. But it came out really cute. I love it. I'm so excited. I'm so happy with it. Um, a, a fabulous accomplishment. It won't be making a debut or it won't be seen in my 2020 finishes. 20, it's 2021. 2021 finishes because I technically finished it in 2022, so, but, um, I worked on it a heck of a lot in 2021, so, anyway, that is my Nutcracker by RATM, excuse me, next thing I want to talk about, so, what day did we do that, on the 8th, we had our very first 901 Stitcher stitch together, it was so much fun, uh, we had like, I think 12 or 13 people show up, and just so you know, Zan and I were totally prepared to be sitting there, just the two of us were just shopping with Jan and Billy at the store. We were just, just prepared to just be the two of us, but we were so glad um, to have so many stitchers come. It was, it was a joy. Um, I think, no, I know. So I haven't been to a, um, an in-person retreat before and I have gone to crochet class and there've been other cross stitchers there, but we weren't all cross stitching. So this is my first time to be physically in the same room with a bunch of cross stitchers. And it was so much fun. It was so much fun to see what everyone was working on. Everyone is, was so excited about their projects. Like it was great. I can't even explain the vibe. If you haven't ever experienced it and you have the opportunity to do a stitch together at, if you have an LNS or you're going to a retreat, um, I highly recommend it because it's just that, that uh, community feeling of with people that, you know, they like the same thing as you and they're super excited about their projects. Um, one of the stitchers, her name is Lacey. She was stitching this big heaven and earth designs um, Superman for someone. And I mean, it, it was literally just popping off the off of her Q-snap, like it was just gorgeous, you know? And then you've got someone else, um, or some of the other things, I, that one's just in my head. I had the lady next to me was stitching a, um, like a deer dimension kit. Um, that was Jovi. And um, somebody was stitching something with, with uh, Leanne's Forbidden Fiber Floss over here. It might've been like a modern folk embroidery. Like we had the whole, we had the whole run of what everyone was stitching and working on. Everybody was doing something different, a different style. Everyone was excited and wanted to share and talk and had questions. And um, it was lovely. It was so lovely. I'm, I'm super excited. We're going to be doing another one um, February 12th. So if you're local, come on and join us. <laughs> if you're out of town and you're in town, come on and join us. We're going to be at Stitchers um, from 2 to 4 on Saturday, um, February the 12th, and we would love to see you. I hope we had some people who um, 
you know, talked to me on Facebook and just, or Zan, and just said they weren't able to come. A lot of people had maybe a COVID symptom or somebody in their family. And, you know, everybody was really good about, you know, not coming while they were not feeling good. So we appreciate that. And um, so we hope to have those people join us next month. Um, it was great. It was great. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it again. I can't wait. So it was a really great time. And I just, I just can't wait to see everyone next month. Really looking forward to it. So let's talk about my whips. I have really enjoyed my whips this past couple of weeks. Um, I'm doing the gear on designer focus. That's the hashtag. This is something that the sun, I want to butcher their name. I'm so sorry. The sunshine stitchers um, are hosting. It's great. If you don't know the Sunshine Stitchers, go check them out. They have a floss tube every weekend. And what they're doing is every month, um, they're listing a designer and they're just saying, hey, you stitch on this designer for the month. It might be something you already have, something you've kitted up, something you want to start. And we're, they have a Facebook group and I've been posting, um, other people have posted their progress in the Facebook group and also on Instagram using the hashtag, hashtag, Garon Designer Focus. Garon comes from Gary and Ronnie. Um, they have a online needlework store called Garon Stitchery. And they also make my very favorite bags, the Garon Toten bags. So um, that's why we're getting the Garon Designer Focus. This month's focus is Mirabilia or Nora Corbett. Um, I have really enjoyed this. I decided instead of just working on one Mirabilia piece for the whole month, which I very well could have done, I would work on one every week. So I'll start talking about those now. My first designer focus for Mirabilia is Miss Christmas Eve. I started Miss Christmas Eve on New Year's Eve with Leanne of Leanne Stitches, also a Forbidden Fiber Co. Uh, I have made some, you did see her probably in my whip parade, maybe, maybe not, I can't remember, but this is where I am. I started her on Christmas Eve. Isn't she beautiful? I'm stitching her on a 30, no, it's a 28 count, custom dyed piece by Forbidden Fiber Co. It doesn't have a name yet. She is gorgeous. I know she's kind of creepy. She's a torso. She's got gloves now though and hands. I love her. I did not want to stop stitching her after week one, but I am glad that I did, but I didn't want to. Um, yeah. She's great. She's beautiful. She's going to be great. She has a wonderful beads that go with her and Krynik. And yeah, I'm really enjoying stitching on her. And I got a lot of progress done her on that first week. We've done on her on the first week. My next focus for, it was last week's focus, was Miss New Year's Fairy. Now, I know y'all haven't seen Miss New Year's Fairy in a hot minute because she has been in time out. Major time out. Not her fault, my fault, but this whole little area on the back of her hair and one of the colors in her wings, I stitched the wrong color. It was supposed to be Krynik. And so when I got her back out last week, I went on and frogged those areas and did some stitching. Um, I'll put a picture up here if I have a before picture of where she was before. And this is where we are now. Let's see. Isn't she pretty? So I frogged this whole little area back here, like in her back of her hair, and this empty space between the black and the blue. That was where I had put my missed stitches in. Well, actually, it was this side here, this empty space here. Yeah, um, and I am just, I'm loving it. I didn't really want to stop stitching her. Her dress has been pretty tedious to stitch because if I put it up close, you can see where all those little spaces are. That's where beads are gonna go. So it has been tons of counting and um, using colored pencil and on my working copy and just marking it off and making sure I did everything the way it's supposed to be done. But I am loving stitching her. I really didn't want to stop stitching her again. Um, and hopefully I will get back to her soon because she doesn't really have tons left. Oops, sorry. I want, like I said, I want to finish all of my cross stitches first, and then I will go into the Krynik and the beads. Um, I did find out I was doing some of my fractional stitches incorrectly, 
And so some of my fractional stitches aren't right on her. You won't really be able to tell because uh, she'll be backstitched over top of where I messed up. But basically I put an extra stitch, like it was almost like I was doing the back stitching already. Um, I don't really know how to explain what I was doing, but I figured it out and I know what I did wrong. And I didn't really put stitches in the wrong place. I just put an extra stitch that I'm gonna back stitch on top of. So it's not, not the end of the world, but yeah, she's great. I'm stitching her on not the called for fabric. This is a 32 count raw silver. See how it's got all the silver sparkle in it. I'm stitching her on the same fabric Rocio of Cocohama Stitchery used for hers. I did ask her what she used, and I love this little bit of extra sparkle on this New Year's fairy. Really enjoyed stitching on her this past week. Got a lot of progress done. And then for this week, I picked up Miss Ladybug by Nora Corbett. So I am stitching this one in memory of my husband's sweet mama i started her and actually i only worked one day on her so far i started her on june 2nd of last year that was my husband's grandmother's birthday and so when i started picked her up again this week i just had her wing done this wing now i've got this done so yeah i have also enjoyed stitching on miss ladybug um, she doesn't have any chronic and not too many beads, so it's a lot of stitching. I am particularly enamored with the shading in this wing and even along the edge to make it look like lace. I, I think it's really, really nice. So I am stitching her on a 32 count dwarf by Picture This Plus. And I will continue to work on her um, all the way until I pull out my last Mira or Norbit, Nora Corbett. Mira or Nora Corbett next Monday. So yeah, I also worked her on, on her on Monday for Lisa of Cross by Floss. <laughs> Wait, there's two. Cross by Floss, Lost in Floss. Oh my goodness. I'm going to put the right one here, okay? Because I mix those two up in my head when I think about the name of the channel. But Lisa, she does hashtag Mira Monday Stitching. And by the way, um, did a fabulous, fabulous whip parade with gorgeous projects and super long, even two part and so enjoyable to watch. So go check that out. I'm going to put her name of her channel right down here. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'll be working on Miss Ladybug the rest of this week. Hopefully I can put her down and work on some of the other things I'm supposed to be working on because the Mirabilia's, they're, they're a little bit like, I get a little bit like, oh, I see some good progress. And I just want to go, 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 go. And to be fair, everything I've picked up the last week, with the exception of maybe one thing, I have felt that way about. So my next project I've been working on um, was my WIPGO poll. So WIPGO um, numbers 2 and 19 were called for January. Whipgo, if you are unfamiliar with Whipgo, go visit Jessie Marie Does Stuff Floss Tube. She'll explain everything to you, but the basics of Whipgo are you create a bingo board, you plug in some whips that you want to see some progress on it, you set some goals, and every month two numbers are called and you work on those. So, uh, like I said, the two numbers that were called were number two and number 19, and I'm doing this by category this year instead of sp specific whips. So the two categories that were called were fandom and Christmas, and my goal is to work four days on each project. So I started off with my fandom project. My fandom project is based on the movie Practical Magic, and the, the chart is Things I Know for Certain by M. Kissa Creations. I am actually stitching this in a monochromatic um, with this really pretty Gloriana silk. It's called this little purple. Yeah. Um, I did want to read it because it's kind of hard to see what it says, but it says, always throw spilled salt over your left shoulder, keep rosemary by your garden gate, plant lavender for luck, and fall in love whenever you can. And then these are all of the witches at the bottom in the family. No, in family. Um, I started this last summer for Carrie of the Three Trail Stitchers birthday start. She wanted, um, she just said, hey, pick on, stitch on 
my words are not working today. Stitch on something that you like the quote of or means something to you. So I really, I always, I really like this quote. So here's where I am. I put two days into this. And I had a few words done, but not many. Um, so yeah, it's turned out pretty good. I have two more lines to stitch and then I'll be down to the witches, which um, Marissa has said, has warned me as well as Julie, um, Colorado, Kansas City girl in the Colorado world, has warned me that the witches are, that's a lot of stitching in there. So I'm considering taking this to the Steel City Stitchers retreat because it looks like it might be a good bit of fill in. I'm really trying to nail down, sorry my face is itching. I'm really trying to nail down what I'm gonna be taking. And it's harder than I thought it was gonna be. I was chatting with Matt, the NBC Stitcher, who by the way, I'm so excited and looking forward to meeting at the retreat um, about what to take and um, it's hard to nail everything down. I mean, I know I'm not gonna be stitching the whole time. I'm gonna be chatting and meeting people and you know, so um, I don't know. You don't wanna take too much stuff, but you wanna have it, right? <laughs> I don't know, we'll see. So that was my whip go for that I've done. I've done two days on that this month. I am feeling a little bit behind on whip go. So the next I've got to, I've got two more days on this fandom and then I've still got four days on my Christmas pull, um, which is going to be Christmas moose by moose by Panna. I haven't stitched on Christmas moose yet, so I won't be showing him just yet. Um, so speaking of the three trail stitchers, they are a great trio. If you don't watch them, check them out. On Friday night, I did a Zoom with uh, Bobby of Pumpkin Creek Primitives, Carrie, Three Trail Stitchers, and her sister Sarah, and her cousin Whitney. We all got together and did a Zoom. Um, what we worked on was our Labyrinth friends. Uh, Carrie, Bobby, and I are doing a stitch along of this piece. It's called Hashtag Bog of Eternal Stench Sal. And, um... Sarah and Whitney are not stitching on him on this, but we didn't care. We just all wanted to chit chat and we had the best, best time. Um, it was, you know, that was five of us and it was kind of like, I think we all had so much to say and so much to talk about. There weren't really any moments of silence. It pretty much just, it flowed really nice and I had a great time. It was great to, um, add, uh, Sarah and Whitney to our chat, um, Bobby and uh, Carrie and I have gotten together a couple times before and we have not shut up the whole time. I mean, it was basically the same thing. It's so nice. So we really made a pact. Like we really need to do this every month and just, you know, make it happen and we can make it happen. So, um, I did get past the word labyrinth finally. So I started stitching on the character, Sarah. I am stitching this on a piece of Brandy's Be Stitch Me. It is an Ada. It's 20 count. It's called Awakening. And um, it was kind of funny because I accidentally used two strands on Labyrinth. And I'm like, you know, I'm just going to go with it. It's the, it's the heading. It's the lettering. It's a little, a little thick for this, but not terrible. But then, so when I came down to start Sarah and um, I knew I was doing a single uh, single strand because it's 20 count. I was like, how do I start this? Because I'm used to loop starting or pin stitching. And, um, you know, eight is not the same as um, linen. So I didn't have that little extra hole. I basically made that extra hole, but I was asking and I'm like, how the heck do you guys start this on this 20 count Ada? Anyway, figured it out. I did get some, some of um, Sarah done here. Like I said, as per the usual, not a lot of stitching, much more talking. Um, and for some weird reason, we all feel like we can't stitch on this unless we're zooming. Like we don't touch it unless we're zooming. Uh, so this project is gonna take us forever, which is fine. I mean, it's fine. What I mean, what am I gonna, I don't have anything to do with it in particular anyway. So um, yeah, that's where we are. Had a great time. I'm looking forward to seeing them next month. It was a week of Zooms for me last month, and I loved it. It was super social. I, in addition to doing that Zoom with Carrie and Bobby, I also did two additional Hawkwind and Hollow Zooms. So the first one was so nice. It was last Wednesday night, and it was um, Bobby from Pumpkin Creek Primitives 
and Leanne from Leanne Stitches and Sammy of Sammy Liz, we all got together. We started this Halloween at H Hawk Run Hollow. So it's Halloween at HRH Sal. Um, we started this several months ago. I don't remember what when we started this last year because we all wanted to stitch it. I think when we started, Leanne had block one done. And um, it has been hard for us. We haven't Zoomed that many times for whatever reason. We, we talk every day, but for whatever reason, we had a hard, we've had a hard time Zooming. But we had so much fun and we really were going to try to do this every month again. So uh, yeah, so I just, I picked it up and when I started, I just had, so I'd already had block one done. Um, when I started the Zoom, I just had this little guy done up here. So between the two Zooms and not being able to put this down, I've made some significant progress on block two in the past week. Like it's really coming along. So I'm excited about this. I am stitching this on a piece of 32 count Heather by Picture This Plus. I love this fabric. It is very, it's got purple and light purple and cream. And then it's got some areas where it just kind of looks dirty. And especially in block two, I'm loving it even more the way everything is coming out. So I'm having so much fun stitching this. So I stitched this, like I said, um, with those girls Wednesday night and we, we stitched pretty late. We had a great time getting caught up about everything. It's so hard to text so many things like it's, it's fun to talk. So I really enjoyed that. And then on Thursday, um, I joined Pam of, um, Stitch New England. Um, she has her floss tube is called Stitching in the Land of Good Enough. She has a hawk run hollow, um, zoom the second week of every month, but we haven't Zoomed in several months. And so it was nice, we got a Zoom back together and it was so great to see everyone. It was a nice group that was on there. Um, it's hard to tell, like, I can see the people when we're talking to them and their names. And then like um, Julie, she was in the Zoom and then I posted on Instagram about having a good time. And then I, she she was commented on, my, on the Instagram like, yeah, and I've, I forget everybody's Instagram name. So I was able to add hers. But I mean, if you see me post something and you are in a Zoom, I'm in. And just if you comment, then I get, then I would love to know your Instagram name too. Sometimes it's hard to put everybody together with their face and their floss tube and their Instagram name. And um, yeah, but it was fun. We had, we had a great time. In fact, I'm really looking forward to, um, of course, next month, um, working on this again with uh, both little Zoom groups. And in a few weeks, um, Pam is having the, the last Thursday of the month. We're going to do a fancy folk Zoom. So I'll get a stitch on Amira or Nora or whatever. So I'm looking forward to that too. If you want to join Pam's fancy folk Zoom, I believe you just go to her floss tube and she has a Google form to sign up for. Her Hawkorn Hollow Zoom is closed at the moment just because of the amount of people that are in there. But the fancy folk one, as far as I know, is not. So yeah, this is where I am. I love it so much. So my lofty goal, my secret goal, I don't know if it's really a secret or not. I would like to get one of these done every month, but that really means pushing a lot of other things off to the side. So I don't know if I'll get it done, uh, that one done every month, but I am gonna make progress on it every month. So I'm loving this. And I don't wanna stop stitching this one either. Like not at all, not a bit. Um, let's see. And so my last whip um, that I've been stitching on, I stitched on it one day. I stitched on it on Monday because on the 17th of every month, I stitch on my wedding anniversary stitch. And that is the Robin Hood Sampler by Park Hopper Bart. I am personalizing this sampler to make it my wedding sampler. I'm going to change the um, initials to my husband and mine initials and our wedding date. So here's where I am. All right. So what I did on Monday was basically from about here over, I did this top border and a little bit more of the lettering. The border takes a long time. It's a lot of stitching in there. Also, I have to admit, we were watching um, some old Ray Donovan episodes. And you know, the, if you've ever watched Ray Donovan before on Showtime, they're very dramatic. <laughs> so 
So I was kind of stitch a little, watch a little, stitch a little, watch a little. But I love this chart. Someday I'm going to finish it. I just keep slowly pecking away at it every month. Park Harper Bart, if you check him out, he is, um, you can buy his charts on Gumroad. They are whatever you want to pay or free. He does a lot of Disney and music inspired art um, charts. I love it. I love it so much. I'm stitching it on the called for fabric, which is a 32 count stone gray nougat. I don't know. It's by Zweigert or Witchelt or somebody like that. And um, I'm using called for DMC. It's beautiful. And this cute little gnome needle minder. That was something Autumn Lane Stitchery had up on their website last Valentine's Day. They might still have it. Oh, this looks in my really cute so much to love valentine bag this is from last year and i don't know if there are any uh spots open in her club this year but look at the inside isn't that sweet i love that bag okay yeah so those are were my whips for the last week or so and what's been going on um let's talk about some plans talk about some haul and then i will let y'all go so plans um I'm still trying to, like I said, I'm still trying to narrow down what I'm going to take to the Steel City Stitcher Retreat. I need to finish my small um, that we're going to be taking with. Um, there was a small designed by Liz Matthews for the retreat. It's really cute. And we're going to do a finishing class on that while we are there. So I want to get it done and this is all I've gotten done. So I need to get the show on the road, right? I'm stitching this on a 37 count cloudburst by Legacy Linen. That is the called for fabric using the called for DMC. So I need to get busy on that one. So that is definitely a plan. What's coming up? Um, I'm gonna, for the rest of this week, stitch on Miss Ladybug and work some more on my whip goes. And then on the 25th, that's next week. So I wrote on the 25th, is Mary 25 stitching. And what I thought I would do was instead of usually I just stitch on a Christmas um, on the 25th of the month. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch on one of the or start one of the Christmas charts that I hit it up for Christmas this year that I didn't get to because my plans just kind of went by the wayside. Um, thanks to uh, Leanne of Forbidden Fiber Co. And Michelle Bendy stitchy of thanks to their um, advent chart that I felt compelled to stitch on every day. <laughs> it's okay. but So I want to get um, some of those charts that I kitted up for Christmas that I didn't get done. I'm going to start one of those every month until I run out of those. So I think what I'm going to start on the 25th um, is going to be this little chickadee by Valerie Pfeiffer. Isn't it sweet? I think I've just got some just like a casual um a platinum 28 count platinum i think that's what that is just like a little bit of leftover that i had it'll be it'll be cute there's a lot of oh i need to work on that there are a lot of dmc because there are probably a lot of blends in this that's what it looks like to me so i need to get that floss straightened out before the 25th and um get working on that that's probably what i'm going to stitch on so all right. Also, I'm kind of thinking about um, the Garon designer focus for next month. So the sun's just a little low. If you go to the Sunshine Stitchers, let's see. If you go to episode number 168 and look in the description box of the Sunshine Stitchers, they let you know um, who their designer focus is for every month. So next month in February is hands-on design. And I think think I'm going to start this one. I was trying to look through my stuff and see what I already had. I do have something kitted up, but I kind of want to start this one. Isn't it cute? Lick the bowl. Life's short. Lick the bowl. Yeah, I think that's really cute. So I think I'm going to go on and get this one kitted up and I'll probably start this one for my designer focus next month. I was also thinking about, while well, I was talking to Matt, the NBC stitcher, and he was, we were talking about what we were taking. And he's going to take Autumn Town by Autumn Lane Stitchery. And uh, I haven't shown you that. Let me, I started this. This was a stitch along that they started um, on the 26th, December 26th of 
2020 and I started it with them. Um, it was Matt and Kristen of Steel City Stitchers and I'm not sure everybody else has started it with them. I, I didn't know him then, but I started it with them and I, I haven't worked on it in a while, but I might take it to the retreat. He's going to take his. Um, I'll post a picture up here what it's really supposed to look like because I just have a really yucky black and white picture of it, but let's see where I am on it. Oh, uh, yeah. So I have this much done on it. Isn't it beautiful? Um, this is a, this called Ford fabric that was dyed specifically for this chart. It's from Mountaineer Fabrics. I think it's called Apple Harvest. Um, they, the people at Mountaineer actually let uh, Cassandra and Aaron name that. Isn't it pretty? So yeah, I'm stitching it. It's, it's some DMC and then it's some fancy floss. And it also has some real pretty um, Gloriana's. Let's see. I'll show off the Gloriana's. What do we have here? Apricot Grove. Look at that. No, I've got this one. I don't know the name of that one. Let me see. Maybe it's on here somewhere. Please. Oh no, just the number. <laughs> the 109, whatever 109 is. That's pretty, isn't it? Really pretty. Yeah. So I might take this with me. Or I might work on this a little bit the next couple of weeks, get some more stitches in on that. It's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty. Um, I think that's it for my plans. Just uh Get that whip go going out and get, get that whip go going again and quit getting distracted by all my mirrors and pretty stuff. All right, let's talk about some haul. I have some haul. Here we go. So it's been a while since we've talked. <laughs> So I have had some things come in. Um, Pam, Stitching the Land of Good Enough, she opened a store called Stitch New England, and I got in, she had sales, a significant amount of sales during the month of December. So I got in on some of her sales, and I got in on the sale that was like, all of her Christmas charts were on sale. So if you watched any of my floss too, Flossmas, you know I did not need a single Christmas chart, yet here we are. I have got um, Glad Tidings by Lindy Stitches. I love these. Pretty. Be Merry and Bright by The Scarlet House. Ooh, I really love this one. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. And I thought this one was so cute. Yuletide Shanty by Plum Street Samplers. It's really cute. On the bottom it says... Old Saint Nick, he sails the seas. His beard grows long so he won't freeze. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Oh, I love it. And then I love this one. Winter Blooms by the Blue Flower. I think this was in like a box or a special release or something where not everybody could get it last year. But I think it's gorgeous. I love how this is finished. I'm sure this is Lady Dot Create stuff. Yeah, Velveteen. Uh -huh. Bittersweet Velveteen, Rainy Chenille, and Snow Palms. Ooh really finished pretty and then this one by the blue flower I loved this one too look at that I think that's an alpaca mm, I don't know if it's an alpaca or a llama no I think it's an alpaca because I think llamas have fuzzier ears anyway isn't that cute and then I've been wanting this one from heartstring sampler which one was my favorite on this I like pile up the tinsel isn't that one cute as I have tinsel on my Christmas tree. And then I have to take it off every year. And I also got that from Pam. Isn't that cute? Super cute. So I also um, purchased, had another purchase that I did not purchase from Pam, but it was inspired by some of Pam's stitching. I purchased this ornament kit from Satsuma Street called Tree Topper. It comes with all the goodies sequins and the beads yeah i purchased that from um the satsuma street etsy shop so cute because pam was stitching on one over the holidays not this one but i had i was enabled i was enabled 
Okay, got some great bags. Let's see. Okay, okay. This this bag, I'm super excited about this. This is possibly one of the most beautiful bags I've ever had. It is this bag of the month by Garon Toten Bags. Look at this. Look at these snowflakes. I am obsessed. This is the most gorgeous winter project bag. I mean, Gary and Ronnie knocked this out of the park. This one is just so beautiful. I think I'm going to put Miss Christmas, Miss New Year's Eve in here, I think. I'm not sure. I love this one so much. Um, I also picked up this from them. They did bags of the states, and Iowa is my home state. This is, Tennessee is not where I was born. I was born in Iowa, so I just thought, uh, when I was just shopping, I saw that this they still had a few Iowa bags left, so I went on and picked that up. I thought it would be fun to have. Yeah, lots of pig, corn and pigs, <laughs> and black dirt. We don't have black dirt down here. We have black dirt up in Iowa, but we do not have black dirt in Memphis. Our dirt is like red clay. Yeah, and then I love Lady Dot Create, not Lady Dot, sorry, Dot Dot Goose bags. And so someone enabled me. They were showing this on their floss tube. This pretty lady, isn't she gorgeous? I love that dress. And I have been wanting this one. I just live at that house. It's precious. Precious, precious. Yep. I love it. So, Dot Dot Goose. Um, one thing I will say about the Dot Dot Goose and the Garon Toten bags. They are really, really well made. They are really, really reasonably priced. And they ship fast. So, kudos to both of those makers. They are... They tick all the boxes. Um, let's see. I've got a few fabric of the months. This must have been December from Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers. Hidden Treasure. It's a 32 count. Ooh, this is pretty. This is, needs a mirror or something on it. Yeah, something fancy for sure on this one. I love this. If I ever get my hands on... Um, Santa's Magic by Mirabilia. That might be a candidate. That Santa's Magic. It went. It was. I think it was originally released in '95, which is the year I graduated high school. But anyway, I love it. it it's it's beautiful. And um, of course, it went out of print like the year I started stitching, so I didn't get it. Um, and then this one is. This must have been December's. Be stitch me. It's a mystery. It's a 32 count linen. That's beautiful, isn't it? Kind of looks like the ocean. All right, let's see. What else do I have here? Oh, so I had a little bit of fun while I was at Stitchers. I picked up this chart. I really wanted to start this this past weekend. I don't know what I didn't, why I didn't. Um, yes, I do. I didn't because I was too busy stitching on Ms. New Year's Eve, but I love these swans. They're beautiful. And um, what I did do that was fun while I was at Stitchers. Uh, in addition to stitching with everyone, is I brought with me this Heartstring Samperly chart, Ye old Noel, that came in the um, Kitten Stitcher Advent Box this year. So, what she suggested here is that you could use, like, a thicker floss or a wool and like a larger count fabric and get really get that um, Victorian feel going um, because this was uh, an antique sampler. And I thought that was a great idea. But what sort of happened was there were these boxes of silks um, in the sale area that were on clearance that I saw last time and I really liked them. And I was able to go in there and I pulled, um, I was able to do a conversion. I was able to pull like the fancy floss that she has charted with this. And I was able to basically do a conversion to these beautiful silks. Aren't they gorgeous? Uh, one thing I had to change was at, for two of the colors, she had like a brown base and I like a light brown and a dark brown. And I, they, she didn't have those. 
Um, so I switched into like a light gray and a dark gray and that I'm just going to roll with that. Um, I'm going to, we did some experimenting while we were there and I'm going to stitch this actually on a 10 count piece of fabric. They're ordering for me a 10 count in buttermilk. So aren't these gorgeous? I'm so excited. This is going to be like super, super pretty. Um, when I pulled the covers, I pulled the colors, um, in the picture, it looks a lot more pink. The colors aren't quite as pink. They're pinky, but they're not quite as pink as they look like in this in this picture. Anyway, yes. Beautiful, beautiful. So that was fun. And I was fortunate to be able to um, make that conversion happen. So yeah, I think... Oh my gosh, I almost forgot. I was going to say, I think that's all my haul, but it's not. Okay, so spoiler alert. If you have ordered the Valentine's at Downton Abbey box from Forbidden Fiber Co., you probably want to stop watching now if you haven't gotten yours yet because I got mine and it's really good. I'm excited about it. It's another one of those though. Okay, so she gives us the chart and I'm going to show the chart now. It's in black and white. Isn't it good? So uh, this is Little Lady Sybil and it says, it's the gloomy things that need our help. If everything in the garden is sunny, why meddle? Oh, I love it, Lady Sybil. Um, we're gonna be stitching this on a 32 count Belfast. The colorway is Countess. It's really, it's really nice. Really nice. Okay, so I can't show you the floss because Leanne has packaged them in these envelopes. And so what she says you can do is kind of like the Yule Ball. Um, they've been marked numbered 1 to 12 for you to open one per day starting on February 1st. I mean, you can open them all at once. But um, yeah, so stitch one color at a time. So that's what I'm going to do. And so I am going to take this. Um, because the days will fall while I'm at the retreat. Um, I am going to take this with me to the Steel City Stitchers retreat and open my, I think we get there on the, the third. Yeah, so I'll just open them and stitch my part every day while I'm there. So I'm so excited. They have fabulous names. I'm not going to tell you the names. Um, they're good names. And Leanne's floss is gorgeous. And it's going to be fun chart stitch. Um, there are some cute little extras in here, like Mrs. Patmore's tea cakes. It's a candle. It smells really nice. I love Mrs. Patmore. Yeah. And some little chocolates and a pretty needle minder. Isn't it pretty? And Cricut cooling spray. It's got some witch hazel, peppermint oil, lavender oil in it. And a pen and a little book. So yeah, a really nice little box. Um, super cute pattern. It's gonna be fun to do, a little bit addictive. I enjoy stitching that way. So have everything I need to stitch, stitch, stitch to my heart's content here and all of these floss. Um, I know Leanne does have a, a confession. Confession. Now, um, before I say this, um, I did have a dear friend threaten to defriend me because I haven't ever watched the show, but, um, Leanne has a new box coming out, Summer in Sunnydale. Uh, if you check it out, like a mystery box or whatever, but it's Buffy the Vampire Slayer and I never watched it. I don't know what I was doing when Buffy and Angel were popular shows. I mean, I might've had a baby or something like that, you know, like... <laughs> just didn't happen haven't ever watched it so but if you're interested go check out leanne's website forbidden fiber co i'm excited to stitch this downton abbey box um i'm not gonna wait i do have another downton abbey kit that i am not going to start until like i'm gonna start it in honor of the movie release so i'm not gonna wait on this one i've got another one to wait on so gosh. um y'all I, I think that was gosh i think that was all my haul y'all so yeah, thanks for bearing with the rambles today. I just feel a little bit off um, just because I'm, I do not know where that birth certificate is. So um, if anyone has any great ideas where I may have hidden that from myself, I feel like I must have needed it for a job or something since three such important documents are all together. Probably, quite possibly. I don't know. 
I'll keep you posted. I hope to be back in a couple weeks. I might squeeze in a floss tube before we go on retreat. I'm not sure. I'm excited to be filming our retreat though. I was kind of thinking about how I will be doing it. Um, that should be interesting. Yeah. So I will be film doing some filming on retreat. And um, so I'll have some stuff to share when I get back from that. Anyway, it was good. Happy January. I hope everyone has a wonderful week and gets to stitch, stitch, stitch. And um, thanks for watching. And thanks for liking and subscribing and all of that good stuff. I appreciate it. I love, love your comments. If I miss them, I'm sorry. Sometimes um, I go back and look and I'm like, I never even saw that comment before. So I really try hard to respond to everybody and because um, I really enjoy that. Um, if you want to keep up with my progress in between um, floss tubes, then come visit me on on Instagram. I'm going to put my Instagram down here. Um, yeah, that's where I post all of like a lot. I post a lot of progress on there. Even if I don't post it in my like direct feed, I do post a lot on my stories. So anyway, come check those out if you want to see what I'm up to in the meantime. I've enjoyed it and I'll see y'all in a couple weeks. Take care. Bye.